Mercedes has a longer history in Formula 1 than any other constructor. Although it did not compete in the first Formula 1 World Championship in 1950 as Ferrari did, the Silver Arrows legend had already been forged prior to the Second World War. In this video, we'll look at the top 5 best Mercedes Formula 1 drivers of all time, their achievements and how they've influenced the team. Number 5. Valtteri Bottas Eight years after Mercedes began its first period of sustained Grand Prix dominance, it did so again as the turbo hybrid era began. Between 2014 and 2016, other teams largely picked up the scraps. Finnish driver Valtteri Bottas impressed enough during his four seasons at Mercedes customer Williams to earn a move to the Silver Arrows when Nico Rosberg decides to retire after winning the 2016 Formula 1 World Championship. The Finn immediately helped to improve the team's atmosphere, which had deteriorated during the Lewis Hamilton Rosberg rivalry. Bottas took his first pole in round 3 at Bahrain and his maiden victory next time out in Russia. Bottas demonstrated that on his best days, he could compete with and defeat the world's best drivers, including Hamilton. But he couldn't maintain that level of performance on a consistent basis, with Hamilton usually having the upper hand in tyre management, racecraft, and in the wet. Bottas finished 5th in the standings with no wins in 2018, but recovered to win 6 races and finish 2nd twice to Hamilton in 2019 and 2020. He also tended to attract the worst of Mercedes' bad luck, as evidenced by his 43-hour pit stop at the 2021 Monaco Grand Prix. Bottas struggled as the number 2, but he was an excellent team player who contributed to Mercedes' 5 Constructors titles during his tenure. That was perhaps most evident in 2021, when Bottas defeated Red Bull's Sergio Perez by 36 points. That was enough to overcome the margin by which Hamilton lost to Max Verstappen, despite the RB16B being a fundamentally faster car than the Mercedes W12. Bottas left Mercedes at the start of 2021 to replace retiring Kimi Raikkonen at Alfa Romeo, freeing up a seat alongside Lewis Hamilton for then-Williams driver George Russell. Despite switching to Alfa Romeo, Bottas had no illusions about the impact Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff has had on his career. Speaking on the Motorsport podcast, Bottas said, He's had a big influence on my career, no doubt. He was one of the first guys who reached out to me in 2007. In the end, the management team that I had early on in my career from 2007 was Mika Hakkinen, Didier Coton, and Toto. So a pretty strong group with lots of knowledge and good backing. With Toto's support, no doubt it made a big difference to my career. Obviously, he was involved at Williams and then he became involved at Mercedes and then it was kind of weird to try and discuss the contract with him because before that, he was a manager, but now we're on the other side of the table. He can be tough, but he was always so supportive. He's one of the key persons for sure why I'm here at the moment, driving still. Number 4. Sterling Moss Mercedes' return to Grand Prix racing had gone well in 1954 with Fangio winning the Drivers' Championship and four races out of the six in the W196. But he often lacked strong enough backup from his teammates. The answer was rising star Sterling Moss, who had impressed in Maserati 250Fs in 1954, which Mercedes boss Norbauer had stated he wanted to see when Moss first approached him. There was mutual respect between the two drivers, with Moss content to learn on the F1 track while leading the Mercedes charge in sports cars. Moss's three brilliant victories in the 300 SLR secured Mercedes with the World Sports Car title in 1955. He also won the British Grand Prix, leading to a Mercedes 1-2-3-4, although he was never sure whether Fangio had let him win his home race or not. Elsewhere, Moss supported the great Argentinian successful bid for a third F1 title, finishing second to Fangio in Belgium and the Netherlands. The W196 is remembered as one of the great Grand Prix cars, but it wasn't easy to drive and required the skills of Fangio and Moss to consistently run at the front. Moss's year with Fangio established him as one of motorsports' stars, and he would go on to be a team leader everywhere else. Moss was a comfortable runner-up in the table and would have undoubtedly continued as a member of the super team had Mercedes not withdrawn from motorsport following the disaster at Le Mans, a race that Moss slash Fangio were on course to win together. Moss would go on to become the sixth most successful British driver in World Championship history, with 16 victories ahead of the 2009 champion Jensen Button, two-time champion Graham Hill, and 1976 world champion James Hunt. Moss is widely regarded as the greatest driver never to win the World Championship. I raced because I love racing, Moss once said. 
As a sport, it was something very special. I can't think of any life that's better than being a professional racing driver. He died in April at the age of 90, prompting an outpouring of tributes from across the motorsporting world. Number 3. Nico Rosberg Nico Rosberg joined Mercedes in 2010 after the factory re-entered Formula 1 after purchasing the title-winning Braun team. He outperformed Michael Schumacher, but it was never clear what that meant because the post-motorcycle accident Schumi was never clearly the same driver who won seven F1 titles during his first stint. Between 2010 and 2012, Mercedes struggled to compete with Red Bull, Ferrari and McLaren, but Rosberg took his first pole and race victory in the 2012 Chinese Grand Prix. The team stepped up a gear when Rosberg's old karting rival, childhood friend and 2008 world champion Hamilton joined for 2013. Red Bull remained too strong and the W04 frequently chewed its tyres, but Mercedes finished second in the constructors table. Hamilton finished ahead of Rosberg in the standings despite the fact that the German had two victories to the Britain's one. Mercedes's massive investment in turbo hybrid engines gave Rosberg and Hamilton the dominant package in 2014. They competed for the world championship and while Rosberg was a tough competitor, Hamilton generally had the upper hand, winning 11 races to Rosberg's 5. Despite a stronger Ferrari challenge, it was more of the same in 2015. Hamilton easily retained his title after defeating Rosberg 10-6, but three straight victories at the end of the season set Rosberg up nicely for the following season. Rosberg began 2016 with four consecutive victories, giving him an early points lead. Hamilton eventually found his stride, but a combination of poor starts and unusual Mercedes unreliability meant Rosberg went into the Abu Dhabi finale with a 12-point lead. Poleman Hamilton attempted to back him into the opposition, but Rosberg held his nerve, taking second place and the championship with a fine pass on Verstappen. Mission accomplished, he announced his shock retirement. Rosberg's relationship with Hamilton became increasingly tense, and there were clashes. They collided at the Belgian Grand Prix in 2014, in Austria in 2016, and famously knocked each other out of the race in Spain the same year, setting Verstappen up for his legendary maiden victory with Red Bull. Speaking in 2021, Toto Wolff described the team's inability to tolerate the situation. It was very difficult because I came into the team as a newcomer in F1 and Nico and Lewis had been in the sport for much longer. But still, I was able to create an environment where they had to respect the team, sometimes with an iron fist, and they understood that they couldn't let us down. They couldn't let Mercedes down. I always made clear that if this was going to happen regularly and I would see a pattern, I have no fear in making somebody miss races. Wolf's ultimatum should give you an idea of how severe the schism between Hamilton and Rosberg had become. Number 2. Juan Manuel Fangio When Mercedes returned to the pinnacle of motorsport, Fangio was already a world champion. Before the W196 was ready for the new 2.5-litre F1, Fangio won the 1954 Argentine and Belgian Grand Prix in a Maserati 250F. The W196 appeared in a streamliner form for the French Grand Prix in July and Fangio led Carl Kling in a Mercedes 1-2. He was defeated at the British Grand Prix and the season-ending Spanish Grand Prix, but he won three more championship races in between, so easily won the title. Except at Reims, Fangio was not supported by the other Mercedes drivers. Without him, the 1954 comeback would have not have appeared as decisive. However, Moss's support arrived in 1955 and Fangio dominated the season, which was cut short due to the Le Mans disaster. Fangio won the Argentinian Grand Prix in one of the hottest F1 races ever, followed by the non-championship Buenos Aires Grand Prix two weeks later. All three W196s broke down in Monaco. Fangio's while leading, but the Silver Arrows were untouchable after that, aided by Lancia's financial woes and Alberto Ascari's death. Fangio won the Belgian and Dutch Grand Prix, with Moss finishing second each time. He finished second to his young teammate in the British Grand Prix, then won the Italian Grand Prix, completing a Mercedes 1-2. Mercedes then withdrew from the sport, leaving Fangio with two world championships and eight wins from 12 starts. He went on to win the championship in 1956 and 57, winning nearly half of the races he entered, giving him the highest win percentage of any driver to this day. His qualifying record was even better, with 48 of his 51 races starting on the front row. We will never see another record like Fangio's again. The remarkable thing about Fangio's record is that he won almost every other race in Formula 1 at a time when the championship was incredibly unpredictable. Due to poor reliability and a high number of crashes, few drivers were able to maintain a consistent winning streak. 
Fangio handled it with ease. One of the most poignant quotes about what makes a racer comes from Fangio. There are those who keep out of mischief and there are the adventurers. We racing drivers are adventurers. The more difficult something is, the greater the attraction that comes from it. Number 1. Lewis Hamilton Six world championships, 82 victories, and the Hamilton Mercedes story is still far from over. Those are records for a single driver at a single team, and Hamilton is already widely regarded as the greatest racer of all time. So this slot on our list was unavoidable. Hamilton's move from McLaren to Mercedes at the end of 2012 seemed risky, given his success at the Woking team and Mercedes' one win since its F1 return in 2010. However, it climbed to second place in the 2013 Constructors' standings and more importantly, had stolen a march on the competition with its new turbo hybrid power unit at the start of the turbo hybrid era. Rosberg provided some stiff opposition, but Hamilton almost always had the upper hand. Hamilton won the 2014 and 2015 titles while Mercedes dominated, before being narrowly beaten to the 2016 title by Rosberg, who then retired. Stung by the defeat and the wider, faster cars for 2017, Hamilton seemed to find another gear. He was also happier within the team after Bottas replaced Rosberg. Despite a resurgent Ferrari challenge, Hamilton won the 2017 and 2018 championships. The latter campaign was arguably one of the best in F1 history with him leading the points before Mercedes negated Ferrari's early pace advantage. Hamilton and Mercedes were virtually unstoppable in 2019 to 2020, with the 2020 W11 being the team's best car, winning 13 of 17 races in a pandemic-hit season. Hamilton's pole in Belgium was outstanding. He set a new F1 lap speed record during Italian Grand Prix qualifying and took one of his best wins yet in Turkey. Rule tweaks for the 2021 put Mercedes on the back foot and handed a slim advantage to Red Bull. Hamilton battled Red Bull's Max Verstappen all season, only losing out in the final lap of the controversial Abu Dhabi Grand Prix finale. Despite some mistakes, most notably at Imola and Baku, Hamilton's level remained high. In 2022, he was joined by highly rated George Russell as F1's new rules era began, though Mercedes has struggled due to the rule changes. Hamilton has always been a divisive figure drawing criticism on numerous occasions, prompting team principal Total Wolf to say this. In general in the United Kingdom, Lewis is not recognised how he should be recognised. One day he's going to stop his career with multiple records, and people will say he was the greatest driver on the planet and we were witnesses of that journey, and wasn't he an interesting personality with all the things he did. But for whatever reason, there is this idea of hitting out, which maybe it provides the better headline, maybe it sells more newspapers or gives more clicks. I don't think it recognises the opportunity that we're a part of, to see maybe the best driver that has ever existed on an exceptional journey. That brings us to the end of our list. What are your thoughts on the drivers we mentioned? Is there anyone you believe should have been on the list? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.